Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, I wanna to give a quick update on the first three months with my new Mac Studio. I really appreciate all of the engagement on my first two videos about the new computer, and I've received a lot of questions about the upgrade process and any compatibility issues that I ran into. So since early August of this year, 2023, my main computer in my home recording studio has been the 2023 Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra chip. It replaced a 2010 Mac Pro that was truly on its last leg. For starters, I am absolutely loving the Mac Studio. Once everything was set up and running, it has been an absolute dream to work on. The insane waiting times to load sessions, the constant crashing and general sluggishness of the Mac Pro are all completely gone. The biggest improvement for me is that instead of having to factor in the slowness of my computer into my workflow, now I'm surprised if anything technical slows me down. And that's been an absolute game changer for me as someone who does this full time day in and day out. But it took some work to get to this point. So let's dive in. Firstly, the big question. Plugin compatibility. I have been able to get all of my plugins that were on the Mac Pro to work on the new Mac Studio, which is running Mac OS Ventura 13.4.1, but it took some serious work to get here. For starters, I chose to start with a clean slate on the Mac Studio and not copy the hard drive from the Mac Pro. I wanted to take the time to go through all of my applications, files and plugins and make sure that I both only loaded what I needed and had all of the most updated versions of everything. So these days, just about every single plugin company uses its own application to load their plugins. I totally understand why this is. And in a lot of ways, it does make things simpler for upgrading and for installing a lot of plugins from one manufacturer at once. But when you have 40 different manufacturers products, you end up downloading 40 separate applications to load all of those plugins, which can just get a bit ridiculous. So during this process is where I ran into my first unexpected roadblock, the dreaded paid upgrade. Ah! Now, I totally understand that upgrading a plugin to work on a completely new chip design is a lengthy and complicated process, and it is worth charging money for. But for whatever reason, I just didn't factor the cost of upgrading plugins into my budget for this computer upgrade. At the end of the day, I only had to spend about an additional $500 to upgrade everything, but that was more than I had planned for. And of course, it inevitably came with some new yearly subscriptions. There were also a few other headaches involved with getting all of my plugins onto the new computer. And here's where I'll offer a bit of advice. Keep track of the emails you have associated with which accounts and the passwords for those accounts. I spent literal hours trying to track down login information for accounts tied to ancient email addresses that I no longer have access to. And I'm sure I'm also not alone in having multiple accounts under different email addresses registered with the same plugin company. Like, I think I have three different native instrument accounts, all with different purchases on them. I really, really wish there was an easy way to combine all of those disparate accounts into one account within each company. In hindsight, I should have done a better job of keeping track of all of this information before upgrading my computer. And that is what I would recommend you do. Solutions like Google's Password Vault and iLock attempt to smooth this transition out but they only go so far. There will likely be something you have to go hunting for in the graveyard of your old emails. And just another side note, Steven Slate, can you please bring all of your products and plugins under one umbrella? It is beyond confusing how fractured all of your offerings are. And I absolutely love your stuff. But why do you need four different companies? Ah! Anyway, I digress. The process of getting all of my plugins loaded and upgraded was by far the most labor intensive part of the process, but it is totally possible. I have yet to come across a plugin that I use regularly that cannot be made to work on the Mac Studio with either a free upgrade, a paid upgrade, or Rosetta. Ah yes, we must talk a bit about Rosetta. So Rosetta is an application compatibility layer between different instruction set architectures. Basically, it allows older software to run on the new Apple Silicon chips without the developers having to create a new version. 
To run Logic Pro with Rosetta, you need to right click on the Logic Pro application in your applications folder and select Get Info. Then tick the box next to Open Using Rosetta. This will allow you to load some of your older plugins that would not otherwise run on these new Mac machines. It does come at the cost of a small performance decrease, but in my experience, it's honestly not that much. An Apple Silicon machine using Rosetta is still gonna be faster than an old Intel-based machine. For my workflow, I've found that I only need to use Rosetta to run one thing, and that is Isotope RX version seven, and I'm only doing it this way because I don't really use the plugins of RX that much. I typically just use the standalone, which works fine. And I just didn't wanna pay for another paid upgrade right now. I mean, come on. The newest version of RX, however, does work natively on Apple Silicon, and I'm sure I will get that at some point. All that said, if you find that some of your plugins are giving you these error messages when trying to load natively on Apple Silicon, try loading them with Rosetta enabled on Logic. Two other changes that I made that have greatly improved my workflow and the speed of Logic Pro. First, I've saved any associated samples for my plugins, like contact instruments or battery samples, on the internal hard drive of my computer. I specifically got a larger internal hard drive for this very reason, and it makes things load so incredibly fast. Contact instruments that used to take minutes to load on the old machine now load instantaneously. It's awesome. In addition to this, I upgraded my external hard drive as well to an OWC Thunderblade, which is a solid state drive using Thunderbolt 3 that offers data transfer speeds up to 2,800 megabits per second. Until I got a new fast computer, I really didn't realize how slow these old spinning disk Seagate drives are. I've been using these things forever and I have a gazillion of them, but man, are they slow. I was still experiencing long loading times and even a few crashes on the Mac Studio when trying to load sessions off of one of these drives. But since I got the Thunderblade, none of that's happening and things are really humming. It's not a cheap solution by any means, but I'm working on tons of stuff all the time and I don't wanna constantly be transferring sessions from the computer hard drive to a slow external hard drive and back and forth. So it's really a perfect solution for me and the thing is so fast, it's great. So if you're looking to upgrade your studio computer, I can fully recommend the M2 Ultra Mac Studio. But you should make a plan for how to load all of your plugins onto it and factor in paid upgrades into your budget, especially if you're coming from an Apple machine with an Intel chip. And also you should finish any current projects you have before moving to a new system. It takes some time to get your bearings with a new computer and you don't wanna be in between systems while mixing or producing a record. Make sure you have a little break in your schedule to fully dedicate the time needed to transitioning to a new system. And that's about it. I'm loving the Mac Studio, so if you have any further questions about the Mac Studio specifically or about my workflow in general, leave a comment below. I'd be happy to answer them and to have a conversation with you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.